All right, Matthew, here we go. We got lesson 6.1.2, Pythagorean triples. So we're just going to review a little bit of what we learned about special right triangles on this one. So we got like what, like nine problems here? Yep. So we're going to just go over how to solve those. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So the pattern for this one is A, A root 3, and 2a. So I know that 2a is equal to 12, so I'm going to write 2a equals 12. Divide by 2 and a is 6. So I now know that this side is 6 because that's the a side. And if a is 6, then this side would be 6 root 3. Next one. Since these two are congruent to each other, we know this is an isosceles, and isosceles triangles are 45, 45, 90 triangles. In this pattern, the legs are A, and the hypotenuse is A root 2. So if A is 3, then this side's 3, this side's 3, and this side would be 3 root 2. Next one. This one doesn't have any angle measurements, but it has two sides. So if we don't have any angle measurements, we can't do 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90. But since we have two sides, we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So we would do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. So we get 9 plus 16 equals C squared. This is 25 equals C squared. We want to take the square root from both sides to get C by itself. And we find out that C is 5. So the last side would be 5. Next one, same deal. We have got two sides, no angles, so Pythagorean theorem. We do 8 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. So 64 plus 36 equals C squared. 64 and 36 is 100. Take the square root from both sides, and we get c is equal to 10. So we know that this last side is 10. Next one, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I can tell I'm not going to use the Pythagorean theorem because I only have one side. Every time we use the Pythagorean theorem, we had two sides. So this is 30, 60, 90. In the pattern, the side, the short leg, the side opposite the 30 degree angle is A. This is the long leg, that's a root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2a. So here we know that a is equal to 4. So if a is 4, this side would be 4 root 3. And then a is 4, so 2 times 4 is 8 for that side. Next one, we've got two sides, Pythagorean theorem. So we do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So this is 25 plus 144 equals c squared. So this is 169 equals c squared. Take the square root from both sides. Now notice we're not doing the plus or minus when we take the square root here, which we were doing in the previous unit, because we don't care about the minus because we can't have a negative side. So that's why we're not doing plus or minus. Technically we should, but we're going to get a negative if we do that, and you can't have a negative side length. So this one, we come up, uh, the square root of 169 is a perfect square. We get 13. All right, next one, we've got two sides, so we'll do the Pythagorean theorem. Let's move up the paper there. So we do 3,000 squared plus 4,000 squared equals c squared. So this would be 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 9 million plus 16 million equals c squared. So these add up to 25 million Then we take the square root from both sides and the square root of 25 million is 5,000. And so this last side is 5,000. For this one, we've got the Pythagorean theorem again. So I'm going to do 15 squared plus 36 squared equals c squared. 
15 times 15 is 225. Ooh, I don't know what 36 times 36 is. 36 squared, 1296. Uh, 225 plus 1296 is 1521. And then we're going to take the square root from both sides, and we get C is equal to 39. And our last one, we've got, let's see, this is the hypotenuse this time, so this is our C value here. So we're going to do 9 squared, oops, wrong color, 9 squared plus B squared equals 41 squared. So 9 squared is 81 plus B squared equals 41 squared is 1681. We're going to subtract 81 from both sides. We get B squared is equal to 1600. And then we're going to take the square root from both sides. And the square root of 1600 should be 40. So our other side here is 40. All right, so what we're going to be looking at now is we're going to focus on these problems where we had whole numbers for each side. So 6, 8, and 10. Over here we had 3, 4, and 5. Here we had 5, 12, and 13. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 15, 36, 39 and 9, 40, 41. Those are what we call Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are right triangle problems where when you plug it into the Pythagorean theorem, you get whole number values. Now, we don't usually get that. We saw that when we were doing the, um, the special right triangles, we were getting irrational numbers for some of our sides, like 6 root 3 and 3 root 2. And that's actually what happens most of the time. But there's certain combinations of sides where all the numbers come out to whole numbers. And we call those triples. Now, there are a certain number of common triples that I want you to memorize the patterns to. So the first one is 3, 4, 5. And we saw it earlier uh, on part C. If I've got a 3, 4, 5 triangle, this just means that 3 squared plus 4 squared is always going to be equal to 5 squared. It's because 9 plus 16 equals 25. And then we get 25 equals 25. So that works in the Pythagorean theorem. So in a 3, 4, 5 triangle, the 5 is always the hypotenuse. In a 5, 12, 13 triangle, we can do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And this is just 25 plus 144 equals 169. And 25 plus 144 is 169. So that works in the Pythagorean theorem. So in a 5, 12, 13 triangle, the 13 is the hypotenuse, the longest side. The next pattern is 8, 15, 17. If I do 8 squared plus 15 squared <clears throat> uh, equals 17 squared, I get 64 plus 225 uh, equals 289. So 64 and 225 is 289. So that one works in the Pythagorean theorem. So in an 8, 15, 17 triangle, the 17 is the hypotenuse. And lastly, <clears throat> we've got a 7, 24, 25 triangle. So in a 7, 24, 25 triangle, if we do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared, this is 49, mm, 576, I don't know, 24 squared, I was right, 576, plus 576 equals 625. And then 49 plus 576 is 625. So we see here that all of these triples work in the Pythagorean theorem. Now, the nice thing about these triples is that we can make similar triangles um, with these triples to make new triple patterns. 
So like if we do a scale factor of two and multiply all these sides by two, we've got a new Pythagorean triple. So if I multiply these by two, my next pattern would be a six, eight, 10 triangle. And that would work in the Pythagorean theorem. And we saw that earlier up here on part T. So this is a three, four, five triangle where just everything got multiplied by two. I could multiply by three. So I could multiply three, four, and five by three. And this would give me a nine, 12, 15 triangle. So that works in the Pythagorean theorem. I could take all these and multiply by four. So <clears throat> that would be a 12, 16, 20 triangle. So these are just new Pythagorean triples and they're similar triangles to this. They've got just different scale factors. And we can do it with all these other base patterns. So 5, 12, 13, uh, if we multiply by 2, 10, 24, uh, 26 would work. So multiply everything by 3, 15, 36, 39 would work. If we multiply everything by 4, 20, 48, and by 4, 52, 52 would work. Multiply all these, that would work. 16, 30, 34, that would be a new pattern. I multiplied all these by 2, that would be 14, 48, 50. That would be a new pattern, and so on and so forth. I mean, you, get, you get the point. We can just keep on multiplying by these. So identify the Pythagorean triples that we found in 12. <clears throat> well, first of all, this was a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So that's one of our triples. And we talked about this one. This is a three, four, five triangle where everything's been multiplied by two. This is a five, 12, 13 triangle. That's one of our base triangles. This one, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, that's a three, four, five triangle where all the sides have just been multiplied by 1,000. This one, 15, 36, 39, that's a five, 12, 13 triangle where everything's been multiplied by three. And then 9, 40, 41, this isn't one of our patterns that we've written down, but there's more patterns out there than just the ones that we wrote down. We just wrote down the four most common ones, but 9, 40, 41 is another triple that works. So there's an infinite amount of these triples out there. We're going to focus mainly on these two. That's the most common ones, but you see these other two show up from time to time as well. What the, the nice thing about knowing your triples is it reduces the amount of work that you have to do. You don't have to do all this Pythagorean theorem stuff if you notice that you're working with a triple. So let's do some problems over here. So use the patterns that we've learned so far to find the missing side length. All right. Oh, 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is not a triple triangle. So this is one where we have to write our pattern. We've got A a root 3, and 2a. Well, this is nasty. So we got 2a, 2a <laughs> equals 13. So a would be equal to 13 over 2. So that tells me this side over here is 13 over 2, or 6.5. This side right here would be 13 over 2, root 3. So 13 over 2, root 3. Next side over here, this one, okay, it's looking like a pattern. So I'm going to see if a number goes into, what's the biggest number that goes into each of these? Let's see, uh, six is the biggest number. If I divide this one by six, I would get three. If I divide this one by six, I'd get four. So this is a three, four, five triangle. Now, of course, this next side isn't five, because all these sides, I do three times six equals 18, four times six equals 24. So this one would be five times six, and that side would be 30 up there. So it's a three, four, five triangle, just everything's been multiplied by six. Next one's 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is the A side, this is A, and this is A root two. So if A is 25, this side's 25, and this side is 25 root 2. 
This one is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is my A side. This is A root 3. And this is 2A. So if A equals 7, this side must be 7 root 3. If A equals 7, 2 times 7 is 14. Okay, so let's see if we have a pattern here. So what's the biggest number that goes into 20 and 52? Well, I think it's 4. Because 5 times 4 is 20. And 13 times 4 is 52. So it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So this side should be stupid lights. Am I going to have a video where the lights don't turn off? Probably not. All right, so this last side should be 12 times 4 because it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle where everything's multiplied by 4. So this last side would be 48. Over here, it's isosceles. So this is A, oops, wrong color, A, A, and A root 2. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now this one's a little bit harder because we've got A root 2 equals 6. I want to know what A is, so I have to divide by root 2 on both sides. So I get A is equal to 6 over root 2. And remember from the last lesson, we're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So we multiply the top and the bottom by root 2. And we get 6 root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2. And then we can reduce, and we end up with 3 root 2. So this side would be 3 root 2, and this side would be 3 root 2. All right, last, almost last part. So here, if I got a 45, 45, 90 triangle, if this side is x, this side is also x. And remember, this side is a root 2. Well, this side is a, technically. So this side would be x root 2. 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is a. This is a root 3. This is 2a. So if a is equal to y, I just replace y or a with y. So this side would be y root 3. And this side would be 2 times y. Over here, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's 3 times x, 4 times x, so this other side would be 5 times x. Over here, 5, 12, 13. It's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So this is 5 times x, 12 times x. This would be 13 times x. <clears throat> this one's nasty. So this one is a. This one is a root 3. And this is 2a. So if I know that 2a is equal to x, I would divide by 2 on both sides. And a would be x over 2. So this side is x over 2. And then this side over here would be x over 2 root 3. Almost done. So on this one, calculate the area and the perimeter. Well, I'm going to turn this into a triangle there, and it looks like I've got a 6 on this side, and this is a 6 on this side. So perimeter, pretty easy. All the sides are 6. So the perimeter would be 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, or 5 times 6. That would be 30. The area is made up of two parts. I've got a square down here. So this would just be 6 times 6 for this area right there. And then I've got a triangle on top. For the triangle, I need to know base times height. Well, my base, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. So if this is 6, this side is 3, and this side is 3. And then it's 30, 60, 90, so this height right here is 3 root 3. Because A is 3, this is 2A, this would be 3 root 3. So that's a triangle. Yeah, I'll do it in this color, that's fine. I got one half, the base is a total of 6. 
and the height is 3 root 3. So, my total area is 6 times 6, that's 36. Half of 6 is 3. 3 times 3 root 3 is 9 root 3. And you can't do anything else. You can't combine them because they're not like terms. Okay, this one right here, I'm going to make a triangle up here. This is 6 root 2. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means that if this is a root 2, a must be 6. So this side 6 and this side 6. And then, oh, and then this is a square here where this is 6, this is 6, and this is 6. So my perimeter would be 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, that's 24. Uh-oh, people are going to come to lunch. And then I've got 6 root 2 for that last side. The area would be this square down here, 6 times 6, plus the area of the triangle, which is 1 half times 6 times 6. Because I've got my base and my height, they're perpendicular to each other. So I get 36 plus half of 36, which is 18, and 36 plus 18 is 54. Last one. So here I know that this is a rectangle here, and then I've got a triangle over here. If this side is 3, this side is 3, and this looks like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now this side is 8, so this side over here has to be 8 too. So my perimeter is 5 plus 8 plus 3 plus 8 plus 4. So 13, 16, uh, 24, 28. My area, I've got a rectangle that's 3 times 8 plus the triangle over here, which is 1 half of 3 times 4. So 3 times 8 is 24. Uh, over here, 12, half of 12 is 6. I get 30 as my area. All right, that's all I got. Math hard. See you later. Bye.